everyone and welcome to my channel. I wanted to show some of my friends how I go about painting a picture from someone's tutorial on YouTube, which is how I kind of taught myself to do watercolor this last couple years. And um, one of the people I found on YouTube was Paul Clark and he has a wonderful channel with many techniques and tutorials and I really like following along to his videos. So here's a video of me following one of his latest ones and I hope you enjoy it. So just a mile up the road from my house, we have a lovely little public footpath where I often take money for a walk. Now it's a beautiful place and I don't think I've ever come across another person once. Today, And dropping in some cobalt blue with just a little touch of alizarin crimson. So here, what I want to do is just knock back the whiteness of the paper. So I'm laying down a very watery wash of yellowy green across the whole landscape. Now I'm going to be mixing all my greens today, mainly from cadmium yellow and cobalt blue. And there'll be just far too many mixes for me to list them all. So basically I'll mix in a small amount of cobalt blue into the cadmium yellow to get a nice bright yellowy green. And then just keep adding more blue to get the darker bluey greens. And I'll even occasionally add in a touch of sap green just to brighten up the colour. Now, by adding in the third primary, in this case the red or the alizarin crimson, it will neutralize the color and give you a much warmer, more olivey green. So that's what I'm doing in the foreground bank, letting the colors mix on the paper. And as you can see, that touch of bright sap green. Now it's my intention to really bring this bank forward, and I'm doing that by using fairly saturated colors. Sharpened end of the brush here to score and scratch in some fine grass details. So 
So for these distant trees, it's a very blue base green. And as I move over to the left, I'm adding in some more yellow and sometimes some more blue to add contrast and fairy my greens, even dropping in a little burnt umber. And I'm using the Da Vinci size 10 brush. for the fields and I'm using lots of green mixes dropping in cool and warm colors all done of course wet in wet So now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break. And luckily I brought my flask with me for a nice cuppa. Still haven't seen any more. Now for this bank of trees in front. Now I'm painting them in a much more yellowy green to create that contrast with the bluey green trees behind. And adding in wet in wet darker values along the bottom. and bushes. And now for these hedgerows, and this is very much a more bluey green. paid a thousand dollars a month if not more just from this app on my phone and i don't know if you can see this but it's called audible okay so i'm going to show you right here i have a check from audible this is for one thousand one hundred dollars uh this one's for one thousand one hundred but adding in more yellow as i come towards the foreground so let me tell you a little bit about hedgerows in the uk we have an estimated 435,000 miles of them, some dating back over 800 years. Now, they're basically walls of woody plants and trees, and you'll just see them everywhere. Now, farmers still find them one of the best ways of dividing up their grazing fields. They are full of wildlife with hundreds of species of plants and animals. And of course, late summer, you'll often find folk down a country lane, blackberry picking from them. I've known 
to add contrast and fairy my greens, even dropping in a little burnt umber. And I'm using the Da Vinci size 10 brush. Now for the fields, and I'm using lots of green mixes, dropping in cool and warm colours, all done of course wet in wet. So now we need to let this totally dry, so it's a perfect time for a short break, and luckily I brought my flask with me for a nice cuppa. Still haven't seen anyone. Now for this bank of trees in front, now I'm painting them in a much more yellowy green to create that contrast with the bluey green trees behind. And adding in wet and wet darker values along the bottom. and then just slowly painting in the small trees and bushes. And now for these hedgerows, and this is very much a more bluey green, but adding in more yellow as I come towards the foreground. So let me tell you a little bit about hedgerows. In the UK, we have an estimated 435,000 miles of them, some dating back over 800 years. Now, they're basically walls of woody plants and trees, and you'll just see them everywhere. Now, farmers still find them one of the best ways of dividing up their grazing fields. They are full of wildlife with hundreds of species of plants and animals. And of course, late summer, you'll often find folk down a country lane, blackberry picking from them. I've known since 17, you and me are meant to be, and I can't say I understand. I just want to hold your hand. Don't believe that I'm rings, guarantees. Promises hold true If I can't be there with you And I will stay Till my breath goes away I will stay Till my breath goes away I will stay Yeah. 
mix for the church and some buildings. I'm just using some yellow ochre. And for the roof, some alizarin crimson with just a touch of cobalt blue dropped in. Now it's time for my slightly out of focus manky brush, which I'm going to use for these overhanging branches. Now they're in the shadow, so it's a very dark value. And you can see the lovely textured effect you get with the uneven bristles, flicking and turning as I go. Now I've done a whole tutorial on trees, including using this brush, link above if you haven't seen it. Now, so I don't get my hand in the way, I'm now painting left-handed, which is a bit of a challenge. Now, of course, my trusty number three rigger for those spinky bits. few little details on the buildings and the fields. for these trees in the foreground and again I'm using a wide selection of greens but always starting with a more yellowy green and then dropping in wet in wet darker more bluey color on the left and along the bottom Picking up some dry brush texture here by laying it flat and dragging it across the cold press paper.
of brush game to score in some finer details. Now with my number six brush, little short dabby strokes for the grass effect. Now again, I have a video on painting grasses, a link above if you're interested. Bizarrely enough, it's my most popular video. Oh, of course we need to add some texture and nothing beats a little bit of random splattering. So I've taken Molly for a quick walk looking at it with fresh eyes. Now I quite like that little darker area in the field. It sort of looks like a bit of a cloud shadow. So I'm going to add a couple more. So what I'm doing is just re-wetting with clean water to guarantee a soft edge, then dropping in the same colour. Now with the foreground I feel this could come forward a little more. So I'm going to be adding in some watery cadmium yellow just to bring the saturation up a little bit. Final touches here with a beige colored pastel pencil for a few trunk details. Finally, with a yellow soft pastel for these lovely little yellow wildflowers. There we go, all done. for these trees in the foreground and again I'm using a wide selection of greens but always starting with a more yellowy green and then dropping in wet and wet darker more bluey color on the left and along the bottom
picking up some dry brush texture here by laying it flat and dragging it across the cold press paper. End of brush again to score in some finer details. Now with my number six brush, little short baggy strokes for the grass effect. Now again I have a video on painting grasses, a link above if you're interested. Bizarrely enough, it's my most popular video. So, I've taken Molly for a quick walk, and now looking at it with fresh eyes. Now, I quite like that little darker area in the field, it sort of looks like a bit of a cloud shadow, so I'm going to add a couple more. So what I'm doing is just re-wetting with clean water to guarantee a soft edge, then dropping in the same colour. Now with the foreground I feel this could come forward a little more, so I'm going to be adding in some watery cadmium yellow just to bring the saturation up a little bit. Final touches here with a beige colour pastel pencil for a few trunk details. And 
finely with a yellow soft pastel for these lovely little yellow wildflowers. There we go, all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go and it'll inspire you to get outside and paint and draw, but there really is nothing like it. Even if it's just outside in your own garden or in the local park, you really can learn a lot from it. So, as ever, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, it's free, leave a comment, I do read every single one, I just can't reply to everyone, and of course I look forward to seeing you all again in two weeks time, so take care everyone, bye for now. Ziploc is designed to keep frozen fish fresh, so you can unlock today's catch. Ziploc. Unlock life. S.C. Johnson. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark, and welcome to my studio. Now today, we're going off to the pretty little hamlet of Penhurst for one of our outdoor painting day workshops. And we're going to have a go at painting this scene of Penhurst Manor. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. Now you'll know it's something I often say, there is nothing like getting out into the great outdoors to sketch and paint. It really is the best way to observe things as you actually see them in real life, or plan ahead as it's known. We really did have a fabulous day. Even the unreliable British weather held out for us. Hmm. And although I didn't get a chance to paint myself as I was teaching, hmm. I did use this reference photo that took on the day as a reference for this painting hey i hope you enjoyed watching that video and if you did hit like and subscribe and join me next time i'll see you soon have a blessed day